So what I have here is a Jupyter notebook with um, Python 3, running Python 3. And uh, so here I can, I can show you the, the code of PyScipop. So, so the, the first thing is that um, this, probably the simplest way to get PyScipop is to, is to build it using the, the Docker. So following the instructions that are here in this nice post. So here, um, well, I mean, uh, I didn't know anything about Docker, so I had to install it. And then I just follow what it said here. I, I'm using Linux, so at least that I know it works. Uh, but, it, but yeah, there are also instructions for Windows, and I guess Mac is the same as Linux. So anyway, so if you wanna run this, um, this notebook, this one here, I recommend you to follow these instructions and read also the, the usage notes because there are some important points. Okay. So yeah, I mean, also there's the, the usual way of installing PySkipOp, which is uh, to well, install the skip optimization suite and then uh, install PySkipOp following the instructions either with pip or by compiling yourself. Okay, so um, once we have PyScipop installed, then uh, to use it, uh, the important thing to know is that, uh, well, everything happens inside a model object and uh, one can actually get help with the help command. So let's start from the, from the very basic. So here, I um, import the model from the PyScript opt and I create a, a model here. And now I, of course, wanna add variables or constraints and so. So to do that, I can check the, the help for how to add a variable. I mean, of course, you need to know that the, the function is called like this, but all this information can be found in the the GitHub, there's um, documentation there. So if I if I run this this code here, I get so here I'm, I'm you can forget about this instruction. This is so so that we can see the output here in the in the Jupyter notebook, and this is to print the version. So here it says that I'm using skip seven with the Soplex in optimized mode. And, yeah. and then the help on the variable. So here there's some, a method from, from the PyScript opt and it receives the following parameters, a name, a variable type, lower bound, upper bound, the objective coefficient, and whether it is a variable for pricing or not. Okay. So um, here, you can create a continuous variable by default, the V type, the variable type is uh, C for continuous. So here uh, we create a variable called C bar uh, with lower bound 0 0.1 and upper bound two. And I store it in the variable C bar. And I also create a binary variable. So this adds the variables to the model and allows you to keep track of it also remember the, the variable. So, okay, let me run this code. Nothing happens, there's no output. So one can take the variables that one creates and combine them. So for example, here I'm, I'm adding the continuous variable with two times the binary variable. And this gives rise to expressions. And then expressions can, uh, um, you can use expressions to build constraints. So the output of, of this, this is an expression that has a term C bar with coefficient one, so it doesn't really matter the, the internal representation. And then if I, if I use it uh, with an inequality or with an equality here, like double equal, then this creates a constraint, an expression constraint. Okay, so here you see the expression constraint is the expression of before and the side. There's no left-hand side and there's one on the right-hand side. 
And now I can actually, well, I can add the variable to the to the model. I think I did something wrong. Okay, I can add the the, the variable the constraint to the model and call it my constraint, and I store it in constraint one. So then um, we're almost ready to to solve our first model. Um, we we need to set an objective function. So the objective function uh, once it is set with this function here, again, when you uh, just use an expression, it has to be linear though. It's important, Skip can only handle linear uh, objective functions. So to, to model non-linear, one has to apply a, a trick that we're gonna see below. So here I'm saying, uh, just uh, maximize the sum of these two variables. So uh, you can see this is the only constraint. And of course, if this variable is one, then it's violated. So the optimal solution is when this variable is zero and this one is gonna be one. And we can uh, check this here. If I run the code, so we set the objective here and then we call optimize. So optimize generates this output here. So this is, um, the skip output, basically. You saw some of it in Leon's talk. So these are very simple problems, so there's not so much output. We solved the optimality in 0 0.01 seconds, and it found two solutions. Um, and then I'm printing the best solution found. So with this uh, function here, and yeah, as we suspected, the continuous variable is one. The other one doesn't appear, which means that it's zero and the optimal value is one. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is nice, but of course, sometimes we, we need to get the solution and do something with it. So to, to get a solution, we can ask the model to give us the best solution found. And we store it here. And then we can ask uh, we can uh, ask for the values of the variables. So, for example, we can ask for the solution for the value of c bar. We're expecting it to be one, and the b bar we're expecting it to be zero. And uh, one can also evaluate more complicated expressions in the solution. One needs to use this function get solval, so it receives the solution that we got here. And uh, yeah, so here I'm adding one to the variable and squaring it and then adding the value of the binary value in the solution. So we get true here, right? Because this is, these are the values. And here, this was what was one. So one plus one is two squared is four. And this one was zero, so we get this. So other things that you can do with uh, PySkip Ops is of course, read and write problems. So here I show you how to write problems. Uh, yeah, so there's this function write problem and one can write it in different uh, formats. So the format is uh, deduced from the name of the, of the file. So there's a current bug that actually the file is not, it's not written, but it is just output here because of, yeah, because I, I told uh, Skip to redirect the output. Anyway, so here you can see the, um, the LP file, right? So the objective that we created, the constraint with the name, and the, the variables with their names, it's binary. And this is the CIP, this is the LP format, and this is the CIP format, a format that a skip uses. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> Suppose um, now we actually want to modify the problem that we have. So this is a common issue. So one would add, uh, want to add a new variable and a new constraint. So one needs to remember that the first thing to do is to free the transform problem. So basically when Skip is solving, Skip uh, transforms, uh, so it copies the original problem and then transform it and then works on the transform problem. And then when one wants to add a variable, uh, since we already solved the, the problem, you cannot really add a variable once the problem is solved. So one needs to go back to the, the, the beginning of the solving process and this is what the free transform does. So, okay, so 
we freed the, the, the problem that we have, the, model, the current uh, solution information. And now we are a new variable, key. Um, and we are at, at, at the constraint that we forgot to, to add. Okay, so this is a nonlinear constraint. So here is the continuous variable plus one over the continuous variable and less or equal than t. And actually what, what we want to do here is, is minimize this, this expression here, but we cannot put this directly in the objective. So we need to model it like this into this new variable, put less or equal. And now the objective is only this new variable, the t, and we minimize it. And so when we, when we do this now, um, what happened here? Yeah, okay, so it's solved again. Uh, so yeah, this, this is a bit more complicated now, there's more output. And um, yeah, well, it finds a solution to the one. Okay, so this was the basic uh, introduction that I wanted to to share with you. I have more material on, 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 on the TSP example. Um, here, and I have even more material below how to build it like in a constraint handler. But I think we, we, we can uh, start with some questions and then I can go back and explain more. So there was actually already a question in the Slack channel, whether, um, a whole column can be added using add var. So using coefficients for all the constraints. I'm pretty sure this is not possible, right? This is not no. possible via the normal um, skip interface or the, the, the PySkip of interface to build um, a MIP or, or some integer model. But you could do this if you're restricting yourself only to the LP case. There's another interface that is basically a very stripped down version of PySkip opt, only operating on the LP, but this is a bit experimental and sort of like an expert interface. So are there, I'm, I'm gonna check that. Okay. So there is, um, I, I got uh, some questions in, in private actually. Mm -hmm. on the on the zoom channel and uh, that is uh, is PySkip up compatible to previous skip versions or okay. to, to all skip versions mm -hmm. so yeah okay so this is the yeah so the the, the answer is no uh, PySkip up is only compatible to the latest skip version and we have this information somewhere here in the installation, I think. Yeah, so here you can check the versions of PySkip opt, which are compatible with, with, with which version of skip. Yes, so right so now- we would actually install a specific version of PySkip opt to make it, uh, make it work with, I don't know, skip six, for instance. Yes. Right? You cannot use uh, PySkip op 3 for skip 6. And you cannot use PySkip op 2 for skip 7. Yes. So another question was um, how, we, how you can report a bug. Okay. I mean, this, this can just be done right here in the, in the GitHub. Yes for PySkip opt. And this is the yeah. most transparent and most, um, yeah, the easiest way to do this actually for everyone involved. <laughs> yes, so just go here, issue, new issue and report your bug. So, so this example that I'm gonna show is based on the, on the example. So in PySkip opt, um, if you clone the repository, uh, you get the, you get all this. And basically, we have code examples in two places, in examples and tests, a bit bad, but okay. So in examples, there are the finished examples, and there's a TSP example somewhere, this one. So this, this, uh, this is based on that example. 
So the idea is, well, I'm not going to go through the details of the TSP or, or much of the of how the different Python stuff is used, but so we generate a random, uh, we generate six nodes randomly and uh, we just get some coordinates and compute some distance and, and then that's the TSP that we are going to solve. So these functions are for that, for just gener get, getting random coordinates and computing the distances. And so we just uh, yeah, generate this random graph here. And um, yeah, I'm going to use this network X uh, package to show the graph. And um, well, we're also going to use it inside uh, the solving. So we have these nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six. The display is a bit bad. Let me see if it can get better. Okay, not much, but anyway. And here we see the distance between the two the, the cities. So oh, Felipe, maybe, hmm? maybe you can slow down a bit because I think yes. it's, it's maybe a bit, uh, a bit too fast. Yes, okay. So, well, I mean, there's not much to say here. This is just getting the, the yeah the, the the data of the, the the distances that we computed here and we are asking this package to to plot the graph so basically i mean this is not really related to basic pop but this is the instance that we are going to solve of the tsp okay so yeah we just we need matplotlib to show the the graph and network to to build it and draw it Okay, so the, the, the TSP model that we're going to be solving is, uh, well, the, the one that you saw in um, Leon's talk at the beginning. So it's, it's here, so the objective function is, well, the, the minimum distance. We have the variable uh, xij that, that tells us whether we go from i to j or from j to i. So whether the edge connecting i and j is in the solution. So here, for example, uh, x12 would be one if we are taking this edge. Okay, and we have the two constraints that are, we have to enter and leave every city. This is this one here, and that we don't want subset. And of course, the problem, as Leon said, is that there are too many of these. So we would like to. I'm going to show how to. Like this is the standard way, probably, that one solves without this constraint, and then adds this constraint when they are needed. So that's the plan here. So we're going to solve the, the problem without the substitute elimination constraints. And then we're going to check whether there is an, a substitute elimination constraint that is violated. And if so, we're going to add it and then repeat. Okay. So let's start. So I include model and quicksum. Quicksum is to make the sums in the constraints faster. So I first create all the variables. So this is a dictionary. Um, uh, mapping the hij to the variable xij. So here in xij, I store, I create a variable that I call xij, is of type binary. I add it to the model and I store it here. Okay, so I'm only going to do this for the j's greater than i. It is a bit annoying, but the point is that. Uh, is undirected, so I don't really care if I go from one to two or from two to one. So I only need to create one of them. It's just gonna make it a bit more annoying and below, but it's not nothing really serious. Okay, so I did execute. Okay, so let me execute this code here. Nothing happens. I'm just adding variables. So now we're gonna uh, add the objective, right? So we had the distances. We already defined them above. Remember, and we define the, the problem here. Here we got the, the nodes and the distances. So, okay. So the objective function is just minimize the, the product, right? Because this represents the total distance of the tool. So I just write it, the, the product for all the variables in the keys of the dictionary. 
and I sum over that. It was a very nice notation, very nice way of writing this, and we are interested in minimizing. Okay? So then we add the constraint uh, that the, we have to go and to go to every city and leave every city. So, and, and, and this is, well, this is a bit annoying that uh, since I, we only defined here for, for J greater than I, then we need to flip here. So here's the deduction. You can check this with more calm later. But basically we can rewrite this sum as the index is less and the index is greater, and then we need to flip one of them. So this is just to explain why there are two quicksums here. So we have this sum and this sum here. And we need to change here the, the order of this. But yeah, I mean, just this is, this is representing this constraint. Okay, and we add one for each node. Because we need to visit each city. Okay. So, um, oh, let me execute this thing that I haven't. So we have the objective, we add the constraints, and now we can uh, already optimize and see what happens. So I'm gonna redirect the output so that we can see it here in the Jupyter notebook. I'm gonna optimize. Then I'm gonna check that we get the, an optimal solution and print the best solution that we get. So, okay. When we optimize, we get this output, right? You know this. And then um, what happened? I'm missing the get status. I should have printed this. Okay. So the solution is here. And you can see, well, let's 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 try to visualize this solution and see if if the if we got a an optimal tool. I mean, remember that we are deleting this, this, uh, the sub two elimination constraint. So we might not get an, a feasible solution to this problem. We need to check whether this constraint is satisfied. Okay. So we have a function here that basically what it does, it, it uh, receives um, the variables that we have and it goes through them. And then if the value of the variable is greater, is, is one basically. So I just check that with 0.5. If, if the value that we get is one, then it means that it is an edge of the, of the optimal solution. So here I basically collect the edges uh, represented by the solution that I have. And this code here is just for, for plotting the, the edges. So here you give the edges and well, some extra magic. So if we do this, we see here, that the tool is going from one to three, and then to three to four, and then from four to one back. So here we have a subtool, right? And we also see that we have another subtool here. So the two, five, six. One can also see this from the solution here, but it's a bit more complicated. By saying from one to three, then from three to four, and then from four to one. Okay. So, so yeah, so the solution is not feasible in the real problem. We have two subtools and we need to add then the subtool elimination constraint. So we're going to use as this S here for the subset of nodes. We're going to use exactly hey, this. What is the setting on? So, um, yeah, we need to add this. Sub so remember, um, we, we, we are going to modify the problem now. So we need to call free transform. Okay. So, okay, I, I'm, I'm collecting here the edges again of the, the, the solution represent, and I'm freeing the transform problem so that I can modify it. And now we can actually add the structural elimination. So basically the idea is to, I'm, I'm gonna use again the network package and I'm gonna, so, okay. So here we, there are two connected components. The one, three, four is a connected component and the two, uh, five, six. So basically each connected component here, it's a, a subtool. So we actually, we are, we are solved 
when the, there's only uh, one connected component. So, yeah, so we, what we're gonna do is ask for the connected components and then go through each of them and add a structural elimination constraint, okay? So, yeah. So we build the graph with the edges and then we ask for the connected components. And um, um, we iterate over each component and we add this, the structural elimination constraint. So we, the sum, so where is it? Here. The sum of the xijs both in S has to be less bigger than the cardinality of S minus one. So here we have that. And we, uh, yeah, less than the cardinality of S minus one. Okay, so if I execute this code, yeah, so it, here it tells us that there are two connected components to suspect it. And here we are printing the, basically some representation of the constraint. So the one, three, four and the two, five, six. So now we can solve again. So I'm, I'm uh, yeah, okay, so we, yes. So he is telling us that the solution that it had before is violated, it's not valid anymore. And now it's solving again. Yeah, the output, we get a solution of 2.55. The previous solution was 2.5. So it's a bit more expensive now, but it looks feasible now. So from one to three, three, four, five, two, six, and back to one. So we visit everybody and uh, if we believe it's hit, then this is the optimal solution. Okay, this was the, the, um, the second part I had prepared. There's a third part, but maybe there are more questions now. Yes, we actually had uh, questions. I mean, I answered them in the Slack channel, but I guess maybe we can just repeat them for everyone. And oh, that is, okay. so can we can we use uh, our own plugins if you are running in the Docker installation? So the, the new Docker uh, package that was released just recently. Okay, I haven't read your answer, but I would say no. Um, well, yes, I, I said uh, not out of the box, but you just have to, so to be sure you just clone PySkip of yourself. Yes. And then, then it should definitely be possible because usually the difficult part for people getting PySkip out running is not getting PySkip out running, but getting skip running beforehand and then linking PySkip out to skip. Yes. So I, I wouldn't know exactly how to set how to call your own PySkip up within the Docker. Yes, but if you have a skip already and you basically could just yes. uh, link, link a new PySkip up to this uh, installation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the second question is um, whether it's efficient to store variables in dictionaries for large problem instances and whether there's maybe a more memory efficient way. So my answer was that it's, um, not as critical as one might think because the variables that we see in PySkip opt are just very shallow copies of the of the actual skip var objects yes. and mm -hmm. are more, more or less just references to the actual skip object. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is the case for most objects in PySkip opt. So for the constraints and uh, whatnot. Okay, so um, yeah, so, so probably this is how you would do it uh, if you use um, the other solvers, I don't know, Gurobi at least. I mean, this, this example was inspired on a, on a Gurobi example. So, but the, uh, the skip way of doing things is usually to, to, to integrate everything into the solving process. So basically, what we're doing now is we solve and then we free, we forget all the information, we free the transform problem, and then we add something and then we, we solve from scratch. So skip uh, the idea with these, um, with the constraint handlers, for example, is, is that you can, well, incorporate your constraints within 
skip and, and affect the solving process of skip. So let me let me show you this. And now this is based on, on, a, on a test that we have in, in, in the so the first part was based on this example, but we have um I don't know if this is too big. Um yeah, in the tests. Yeah, there's a lot of information in these tests. And uh, there's a test TSP that is an, yeah, I used it for, for doing this. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a constraint handler that basically checks whether there is a structural elimination, uh, yeah, structural elimination constraint violated, and then it's gonna add it. Okay, that's the basic idea. So from, from PyScape up, I need to import now the constraint handler. Um, well, I import again the quick sum and skip result because we need to inform basically, yeah, basically, I mean, if you remember the talk of, of Leon, there was this, this flower where you can uh, extend skip with extra plugins. Well, this is basically a plugin written in Python that we're gonna put uh, extend skip with. So we need to communicate to skip and then we need to inform about the results also. So this is just a, a Python class that extends the, the const handler. And uh, in the initialization of this class, we're gonna give the variables that we want the, that there are no subtour between the, these variables, assuming that they are all connected in a graph and they're all binary. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can, so what do I, oh, I didn't write it. I don't know why I did it. So, okay, so there are many parts of a constraint handler. I mean, the constraint handler is the most complicated plugin of Skip, but I'm, I'm just gonna go, uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail of each part, but uh, I need to tell you that you need to implement some fundamental callbacks they're called. So the, enfor the enforcement callback, the check callback, and the lock callback. So you can forget about this one here. So actually it does nothing here. And the, the check, it, it basically receives a solution and it wants to, uh, it, it needs to know whether the solution is feasible or not. So what we do basically for that is we actually check whether there are subtools. If there is a subtool, then we say it's infeasible and if there's no subtool, we just say that it's feasible. And in the enforcement, what we, what we have to do is we, we are gonna get the LP solution and we need to check whether they are, um, they are wh whether we can do something to, to separate the solution if it's not feasible. So what we do is we, again, we get all the subtools and if we find, if there are subtools, then we're gonna add the, the subtool elimination constraints very much like we did before. Yeah. And if there are no subtools, we just say that it's feasible. We need to inform that we did something. And in this case, what we did, we, we added a constraint we added a linear constraint to the model, okay? And the method for, for uh, finding the subtool is basically what, what, what we did above. Also, we find the edges starting from the solution that we have. And uh, yeah, we just ask the, the network X package to give us the connected component. And if there's only one component, then we know it's feasible, so we we'll return an empty list. Otherwise, we we'll return the component. And now there's a slight difference with before, is that actually before we, we were solving a problem with in integer variables. And so when we got the solution, we knew that the, that the values of the variables were either zero or one. But here in the enforcement, we, we are enforcing the LP solution. So now we check what we consider uh, an edge to be present if the, the variable is large enough or large enough is above uh, 10 to the minus six. Okay, I hope that's clear. 
So yeah, so this is basically the constraint handler. So this is what it will do. So it will be incorporated in the solving process of Skip, and then it will be called, and yeah, we will not find a feasible solution unless uh, it, it satisfies the subtle elimination constraint. Skip out of this. And so, okay, we need to include uh, this constraint handler to Skip. Okay, so um, I create a new model. We create the variables as before. We set the same objective as before, and we add the uh, visit all cities. Like uh, we enter a city and we leave a city constraint as before. So here comes the first difference. So we first create an object of this constraint handler. Remember, this is a class constraint handler, and the init. We, we store the variables here. So we need to pass the variables when we create this constraint handler. So this is what this is doing. We are passing the variables, or the, the dictionary of the variables. And we get an object. We create an object. So then, and then we include it to the model. So we use this function include constraint handler. Include the constraint handler. It's called TSP. The description is this piece of really made for it. Um, yeah, and some other flags. So the check priority here is um, so that the check, this, this callback, the check, is going to get called after the integrality uh, constraint. So this means that uh, when we get called, we can assume that the solution is integer feasible. Okay, and, and to specify that, you just need to set a, a negative priority. It doesn't need to be minus 10. Any negative will do that. And this is a bit more technical and more stupid. We can talk about that later. Okay, so again, I'm gonna redirect the output here, optimize, visualize the solution, and then I'm gonna show the statistics of this solve. Okay, so I'm gonna execute this code here first to have the the class, and now I'm gonna run this one. Okay, so it does pre-solving, and now it's solving, right? It solved the, the P, get some dual bound, some heuristic found some primal bound, and then at some point in the, uh, yeah, our constraint got called. So let's keep called our constraint, and we actually found two to subtle elimination constraints. This is happening here. This print is, is what we're seeing. So in the end for, we did all that we talked before. We added the constraint and printed this. This is what we see here. And yeah, then it, well, it only got called once apparently because we found the two cuts and then we were done. Which, is, which were basically also the same cuts that we found before. And the solution that we find is the same one as before, from one, two, three, four, five, six. So here are the statistics of the solve. And what I wanna show you is that in the constraint, in the list of constraints, we, our TSP constraint appears. So this is the constraint that we add. And here we see, okay, the N4 got called twice, the check got called 10 times. And so Felipe, this mm -hmm. might be a good idea to answer the question that just came into the chat. Um, what is the use of const check callback? And uh, especially what's the difference to the const enforce callback? Yes, okay. So in the enforcement, in enforcement, um, you basically solve, say, the LP relaxation, and now you want to do something about this LP solution. Uh, you want to either, yeah, you want to separate it, basically, because it's usually infeasible. The, and, and that's what the, what the enforcement does. The check, it just, it just checks whether something is feasible. So basically, if a heuristic runs and gives you a solution, you're not going to call the enforcement but you're gonna, uh, to check feasibility, you're gonna call the check, okay? 
So the enforcement is actually is kind of the, 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 the last resource, so to say, of, of, of doing something. So we could have implemented a separator or we could have implemented the separator callback of the constraint, which would add these cuts to the P. And, um, and we would probably have solved the, the problem before calling the, the enforcement. The enforcement is basically when nobody else can do something and then you get called. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, so the check is more is more general. It's, it, 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 it's used more by heuristics and other methods that just want to check whether something is feasible. Ah, so Felipe, yes. uh, would you possibly explain the role of all cons info, cons info LP, cons check once more? Yeah, sure. This is this is actually um, a pretty complicated um, topic, and I guess I guess it's it's justified to just <laughs> explain this another time, maybe in more more detail. Yeah. So so let me so so here in in, in skip. You you have um, the documentation. Oh, it's also there. So so you can get all the details in in in, in this section here. So that was a bit fast. Let me do it again. So the documentation here we have the, these sections here, and there's the how to add. And the how to add, then you can uh, find how to add a constraint handler or a pricer or a propagate or whatever you want. And the constraint handler here, there, there are all this, the fundamental uh, core properties now. So the callbacks, oh no, sorry, these are the properties. And then the, yeah, yeah, the fundamental callbacks. So the const check, and here's an explanation of the const check, the n for p. So he, here are more details. So, okay. So what's the, the, the idea? So you are adding a constraint handler and you should at least uh, be, a, be a, so Skip needs to know whether the, the solution that it has is feasible. So the constraint needs to in, uh, inform this back to Skip and this is why the const check exists. So the const check is a callback used to just verify whether the, the, the solution is feasible to the constraints of this constraint handler. Okay, that's its role. Then uh, it's not enough for Skip to just know that the solution is feasible or not because suppose you're solving and then you, you find a, a solution and you say, I'm, I'm infeasible. And then all the other constraints say that they are feasible. But then what, what should happen? I mean, what should Skip do next? So that's why uh, Skip should, uh, like, if you ever come to that point where you're feasible for everybody but yourself, so by your constraint, then the constraint should have some method to resolve this infeasibility. And this is what the, what the enforcement should do. So the enforcement should, it, it, it can do many things. It can add a constraint like we did here. It can add a row to the P, a cut. It can uh, reduce the domain of variables. It can even branch. So whatever method it needs to resolve the infeasibility to avoid this, this state where skip, where everybody says that they are feasible except this constraint, but this constraint cannot do anything about it. That's bad because there's no way to continue the solving process. So this is what the enforcement is for. And well, yeah, these are the two main ones. The log is, yeah, I don't really want to go in, into the log. So I'm going to skip it for now. Anything else? Um, yes. So we had one other question. Um, how skip or especially PySkip opt compares to the built-in optimization modules of SciPy? And yeah, this is something I, uh, in the meantime, tried to figure out myself. So what SciPy Optimize actually um, does. So it's basically this, I mean, SciPy is this big scientific programming module in Python. And this also has some optimization capabilities. 
it does not seem that it has any integer optimization capabilities. So as soon as you want to do something with integer variables, integers or binaries, well, you're out of luck and you can't do this with SciPy. SciPy is only a um, continuous optimization or only has uh, continuous optimization capabilities. So there is linear programming and nonlinear programming, but nothing uh, with respect to integrality. Ah, okay. So, so, so for, for, for all those problems, you should then use a skip. Yeah, so, so, so the, the, well, one thing is the integrality, right? Though you can still model it with some nonlinear constraint, of course. But um, I guess the solvers in Cypy, I saw, okay, first I should say that I have no idea. I, I, I've never used Cypy. Um, but I, I assume that these solvers are local uh, solvers. So they find a local optimal solution. So if you have a non-convex, non-linear problem, you, you're not uh, ensured that you're gonna get the global optimum. You can imagine, and this is what Skip does. Skip will solve the problem to global optimum. Mm -hmm. And then just now in the, in the Slack channel, we had a question about the Conda package. Um, when this will be available. So I'm not sure about this. Felipe, do you have any concrete no. ideas? No. No, but I, I assume that it was available already because of this Docker. I think the Docker is using the Conda package, but I, I, I really don't know. I don't know if, 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 if you have more experience with Docker and you can see the Docker file and, and from there figure out whether yeah, so in my, from what I understood is that the, the main question is um, still about, about licensing and that we would actually need to distribute the, the Conda packages completely together with Skip. And this is just something that's, that is not yet available. So you would basically do Conda install and then you would get Skip, a working Skip compilation skip binary and libraries um, together with PySkip opt. And right now your best bet is just to use the Docker package if you don't want to install anything uh, yourself. And the next easiest thing is actually to, in, to use the installer packages that are on the skip webpage. Then just run those. So install skip for your system. And then you can just follow the installation guidelines on PySkip opt. Usually this should just be a simple pip install PySkip opt. Okay. Do you provide a branch and price example? Is that the next question? Yes. Uh, actually, so yeah, this is a bit of a mess that I have. I apologize. <laughs> um, so I think I think we don't have one in these tests. So we do have a pricer. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure what is in here, but what I can tell you is that there is a branch, and this is a bit of a mess. I should I should put it in the in the main branch. So there is a branch. Use prop so for it, the model. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm sorry. So here you have this coloring example. Yes, I, the I coloring this, is uh, the uh, what is a translation of the coloring example that is the Slack in, channel. Skip. Yeah, I have to apologize. So mm -hmm. there's some documentation explaining the logic of what it does, but this is not going to work because of the, the branch. It has some special functions, which is not nothing so special anyway. So we can actually move it to the main one, but here. Yes, um, what we have, well, we have a branch rule, okay. we have um, a constraint handler, and yeah, so here's a very complete branch and price example. A price, uh, the price is here. Yeah, it's a bit long, there's nothing simpler than this. So is there any more questions? 
Uh, maybe you can answer what, what we can do or what people can do if something is not yet implemented in PyScipopt. So if there is a missing function or a missing plugin. Okay, so let me show the screen again then. So there are a couple of things. Um, yeah. So well, for one, you can um, always create an issue asking for for some 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 feature. I don't know what happened here. And um, the other thing that you can do is to actually try to uh, extend the interface yourself. So the relevant part is the to do this. The relevant part is to go to the source to PyScript Opt. And here there are two important files mainly the skip pxd and the skip pyx. Let me open both of them. Okay. So usually the, the, the interface is a, is a very thin wrapper of skip functions. We don't really have much more functionality. I mean, okay, we have way less functionality than skip, but we don't have too many functions that only exist in PyScript Opt and not in skip. We do have some, but there are not so many. So basically, um, say, yeah, somebody wanted to get the number of leaps that skip has. So you would need this function from skip. This function is found in this file, in the, in the, in, is defined in this header file. And so to, to put it in, to be able to access it, one needs to, in the PXD, skip PXD, one needs to put the header file the header, the, the signature of the function here, hopefully in the correct placement. So if it's from skip bar, then here or there. And uh, so with this here, now we can call this function from the PYX file. So here, for example, let me search this uh, N leaves, was it? Yeah. So, so this is a function. So, here's the model class. By the way, this, this is where the all the things that we can ask for a model. So you can also look here. And um, yeah, I mean, so the model basically, what you need to know about the model is that the model wraps skip. So yeah, the model has a skip here. So basically, whenever you 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 have a function that needs a skip pointer, then you it should live in, inside the model class. For example, this one here receives a skip pointer, so it should live inside the, that class. Uh, on the other hand, you have a, a other methods, for example, a method for columns of the P, and this doesn't re uh, require a skip pointer. So we actually have a column class, and then functions for columns should be in the column class. So yeah, in this case, we, we need, it needs to be in the, in the model class and yeah basically the wrapping is is fairly fairly simple uh oops so what's it and leaves yeah so it's just a python function we call it basically the same name that the, as the skip function but we remove the skip it receives itself which is for model and it just calls the the function of skip with the with the skip stored in the model. So this is many, many of the functions that you see are just uh, this easy to wrap. Some others get a bit more complicated, but, but yeah, I mean, for those, you can also open an issue. Yeah, I don't know. Most of the functions that we have are wrapped like this. Yeah, so I guess one, one last question that was in the Zoom chat is, uh, can we use PyScape opt to solve problems using vendor's decomposition method? Oh, actually, yes. But for that was the other Q&A session. Oh, and, and Ambrose, Ambrose just, just replied, yes, that this is uh, actually possible since uh, skip version six. Yes. So sadly, I don't have any experience of using vendors within PyScape opt vendors at all uh, but yeah you can also probably 
asks Steve. I don't know if he. I, th I think in theory that. we can say that everything that is possible with skip should also be possible with pi skip out. Oh yeah, that's for sure. So actually, there should be. Um, so where is this in the tests? There should be a test bender. So here. Here there's some example of how to use the vendors. Yeah. The vendors. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know how to use it. But you can inspire yourself by this file. Okay. We are on time, I think. Are we? Yes. It's perfectly on time. <laughs> Okay, so I want to thank everybody. If you have more questions, you can uh, open issues, always. And I guess until tomorrow, right, you can just use the, the Slack channel also? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Cool. Bye. Ciao, ciao.